So as the boiling point increases, the viscosity and the color intensity of these hydrocarbons is also going to increase. Now, as the viscosity also increases, the boiling point increases and the flammability of these hydrocarbons decreases. So that's what happens. So as the boiling point increases, the viscosity and the color of the hydrocarbon is going to increase. So as the viscosity and the boiling point of the hydrocarbons increase, the flammability of the hydrocarbon is going to decrease. So this explains why the members lower in the hydrocarbon family, that is methane, ethane, propane and butane, they are highly flammable. Meaning that methane is highly flammable, then we go to butane, then we go to propane, uh, to propane rather than you go to butane. So it will mean that as the number of carbon atoms increases, the viscosity increases, the color increases, and also the boiling point increases. As the number of carbon atoms increases, the flammability of the hydrocarbons, we see that it decreases, whereby methane is the most flammable because it only has one carbon atom and four hydrogens, while decane is the least flammable because first of all, it's not a gas, decane it's a liquid. So it is C10 and H22. So remember in the laboratory, we say that distillation process uh, has impurities because this distillation of crude oil requires high machinery in order to be able to separate the components accurately. So in the factories, however, we see that there's a large scale uh, fractional distillation of crude oil whereby this, this is how it happens, the different structures or the different components are separated at different zones based on the different boiling points that there is. As well, we see that this method is very much efficient because it only and only separates the individual components from the, uh, from the crude oil. That is maybe, for example, the kerosene is separated only and collected only, petrol only like that. So this method is very much efficient and these are the components that are separated in each section of the, in each section of the fractional distillation chamber. So apart from that, we also have this table whereby this table is just a summary of showing uh, how many carbon atoms, uh, the number of carbon atoms and their uses. Like for example, we see uh, from the carbon number one to carbon number four, mostly they are used as gases, methane gas used in cooking, the biogas used in doing this and that. So be between the carbon number one to carbon number four, they are basically used as gases, whereby we also see that their boiling point are below 25 degrees Celsius. So this includes methane, ethane, propane, butane, etc. So from uh, the carbon number 12 to carbon number 14, we see that there is a very much increase in the boiling point, whereby the boiling point averages at about 70 degrees Celsius. And these are mainly used as fuel for motor vehicles, automobiles, machinery, etc. So example of a hydrocarbon that falls here, the most common we have the petrol. So petrol falls between the hydrocarbon of at least between 4 to 12, whereby the boiling point of this averages about 75 degrees Celsius. So uh, the carbon atoms from about uh, 7 to 14, they have about the boiling point of 90 to 100, 140 degrees Celsius, and they are mostly used as solvent for cleaning and for making the varnishes and also for the ones that are used in cleaning the windows ETC, so as the table denotes. So for the turpentine, we see that this turpentine, it is highly vicious and then it is very much sticky. So whereby the roads have been constructed, you can see those two large jerry cans of turpentine uh, on the roadside. If you try to go and, and touch the turpentine, you will feel it is very much sticky. Also, after it has been applied on tarmac, you try walking on the tarmac, you will feel the soles of your shoes uh, are like kind of sticking to the, uh, to the tarmac, which is being uh, processed at the moment. So this turpentine, since it is highly vicious, since it is very much, uh, very much sticky, so you see that it has very many carbon atoms. So they average at about 70 carbon atoms to about 140 carbon atoms. So the boiling point is above 350 degrees Celsius. So it has a very high boiling point. It has very many carbon atoms which support, uh, support that. Basically, it falls under the family of uh, the unsaturated hydrocarbons because it is dark in color, it is highly vicious, it is sticky. So 
Mostly it is used in making in road construction. So that is mostly where you are going to get this bitumen or the turpentine. Mostly in road construction, that is where it is used. So it is used to hold together the tarmac or hold together the small pebbles of rocks that are used in the, to hold together the tarmac in the road construction. So after that, let's now look at cracking of alkenes. So cracking, cracking, what is cracking? Like if a wall has cracked, like for example, my board has cracked. So what is cracking? This is just breaking down. Breaking down of alkenes. That is what it means by cracking of, uh, cracking of alkenes. So this basically just means breaking of alkenes. Just that they didn't use the word breaking, they used cracking. So you see that in cracking of alkenes, you are going to get a smaller alkene, we are going to get a smaller alkene, and you are going to get hydrogen in some instance. So that is basically cracking of alkenes. So this is mainly breaking of large molecules of alkenes uh, to smaller alkene, alkene, and hydrogen. So it mainly occurs under elevated temperatures of about 500 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius. It occurs between that range, or you can say between 400 to about 657 100 degrees Celsius. So those are the temperature, the optimum temperatures for cracking of alkenes. So between 400 to 700 degrees Celsius, so that is exactly what happens. So you see that the long chain alkene basically breaks down to a smaller alkene, to a smaller alkene and hydrogen gas. So that is what happens during cracking of alkenes. So like for example, when octane is cracked or is broken down, so you're going to get a pentane, we are going to get an a hexene plus hydrogen gas. So that is exactly what is going to happen during the cracking of alkenes. So however, we have two main, uh, two main ways or two main methods by which cracking of alkene takes place. So there are two main methods by which cracking of alkenes can take place. So the first one is thermal cracking. So thermal from the word thermos or thermal. So thermal means heat. We are going to use heat to crack the alkenes. So apart from that, we have the catalytic cracking whereby we are going to use a suitable, uh, the catalyst, like for example, we are going to use silicon for oxide in the process. So as you can see in this table, we have the table of, of cracking whereby we have the thermal cracking and then we have the catalytic cracking. So for the thermal cracking, we have the liquid phase and the vapor phase. So these ones you are going to look at them in the upcoming classes, the liquid phase and the vapor phase. So also in the, in the other cracking, we see that it, mainly, it is mainly used to crack high hydrocarbons, to give petroleum products, uh, to give gasoline products, etc. So in the thermal cracking, basically, we see that very high temperatures are used in thermal cracking. Like, for example, in the previous ones we have looked at, so very high temperatures are used above 400 degrees Celsius. So thermal cracking uses very high temperatures. But in the other cracking, we see that very low temperatures are used. So, yeah, it uses very low temperatures in the presence of uh, low pressure. So, in the catalytic cracking, we use low temperatures and low pressure. In the thermal cracking, it is only high temperatures which are being used. So, that's the difference. In the, in the thermal cracking, we use very high temperatures. In the other catalytic cracking, we use low temperatures and we use low pressure in order for the cracking process to take place. So like for example, you see that the petroleum and gasoline cracking is mainly useful since it provides hydrogen gas for the industrial use. Like for example, we looked at harbor process. So this catalytic cracking is very much economical since we don't need to generate a lot of energy in order to break down the hydrocarbon to the different constituent hydrocarbons we need. So it is very much economical since we use low temperatures and we use low pressure apart from the thermal which we must use very high temperatures and very high machinery in order to be able to accommodate that very high temperature. 